Hello, my name is Ken, and I want to welcome you back to Deep Water. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in our lives. The title of this message is, Was Jesus Above the Law? Now, I'm sure we have some theologianites who can pop out an answer quicker than I can say theologianites, but then this message would be for the rest of us. This is a series message of which this is the first episode of three. Sometimes I enjoy it when God broadens my current view of him. Actually, I enjoy it all the time. Just when I think I have him somewhat figured out, or at least feel like I understand him from time to time, insofar as what he is saying and or doing, he throws me a curveball. In this message, it is not so much a message about how you should do so and so, but that you can see that through your journey with God, he will leave Easter eggs. Little things that stop you and cause you to wonder what he is saying or what he is doing, or how he could say such and such a thing in apparent contradiction to what he has already said. Sometimes it even appears as though he has crossed his own lines, the very lines he set up. But I say there must be more to it, so let's wrestle with God and see him just a little bit deeper. Exodus 20, 8, 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Clear, right? Do no work. Exodus 23:12. Six days you shall do your work, and on the seventh day you shall rest, that your ox and your donkey may rest, and the son of your female servant and the stranger may be refreshed. This scripture explains why we should do no work, to be rested and refreshed, that our living tools also be rested as well, right? In Deuteronomy, we see more law. Deuteronomy 15:14. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your ox, nor your donkey, nor any of your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates, that your male servant and your female servant may rest as well as you. This one contains both the command and the reason for the command. Again, we are to do no work, thus allowing rest, everywhere rest, here arrest, there arrest, everywhere arrest, rest. <laughs> Sorry about that. A side note is how funny we are to back then, and maybe even today, to ask God, well, what is work? How would you define it? It seems like a legitimate question until you see the motivation behind it. But we won't go there right now. So we have no working on the Sabbath. What else? Leviticus 20.10. The man who commits adultery with another man's wife He who commits adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress, shall surely be put to death. I always like to decom words to be sure we fully understand what is being said in the passage. Adultery, voluntary sexual intercourse between a married person and someone other than their lawful spouse. Clear, right? Mark 2, 23, 28. Now it happened that he went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, And as they went, his disciples began to pluck the heads of grain. And the Pharisee said to him, Look, why do they do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Now go back to what I said earlier about work. The Pharisees had defined work as getting something to eat. I do not believe that this was God's intention at all in the context of this scripture. When God clearly did not want his people to do something specific, he told them, right? Exodus 16, 22-23. And so it was on the sixth day that they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for each one. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. Then he said to them, This is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake today, and boil what you will boil, and lay up for yourselves all that remains, to be kept until morning. Clear here? Now that was for those who were journeying to the promised land. In other words, it was for those who were currently in the wilderness. Was it not a test of obedience? Back to Mark 2, 23, 28. 
In verse 25 it states, But he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and hungry? He and those with him. How he went into the house of God in the days of Abathar the high priest, and ate the showbread, which is not lawful to eat, except for the priest, and also gave some to those who were with him. 1 Samuel 21, 1-6 so now this is where I needed to look up why the Pharisees said what they said. And yes, I see that they refer to the Sabbath, but in looking it up in a study Bible, it stated another reason, not intentionally, but nonetheless. So now this may also be a good time to also let you in on a little secret, which is that when you read the study Bibles and or Bibles with notes and commentary, you should be aware that it is not considered scripture. However, it can be helpful as long as it is accurately reflecting the purpose and intent of the scripture. In other words, point blank, some Bibles contain notes that are incorrect. This doesn't mean you shouldn't have them or use them. It does, however, mean that you should really pay attention to what the notes are saying and compare them to actual scripture. So we see in the next scripture, which is supposed to support my message, has actually presented me an opportunity to share with you the cautionary tale regarding study Bibles. Now the scripture is referenced to support the Pharisees' line of thinking, but as we can see, the opposite is true. This doesn't say, don't do it on the Sabbath. This just says, when you do, this is how you do it. Deuteronomy 23, 24, 25. When you come into your neighbor's vineyard, you may eat your fill of grapes at your pleasure, but you shall not put any in your container. When you come into your neighbor's standing grain, you may pluck the heads with your hand, but you shall not use a sickle on your neighbor's standing grain. So look at Mark again and see how it is specific to the Sabbath. Mark 2, 23, 28. Now it happened that as he went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and as they went, his disciples began to pluck the heads of grain. And the Pharisee said to him, Look, why do they do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? So let's go back to where the Pharisees may have gotten the idea that what the disciples were doing was spiritually illegal. Exodus 16, 22, 23. And so it was on the sixth day that they gathered twice as much bread, two owners for each one. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. Then he said to them, this is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake today and boil what you will boil and lay up for yourselves all that remains to be kept until morning. So like many religions do today, these guys took a God instruction that was specific to the peeps in the wilderness, who were constantly being tested by God on purpose, and also specific to the food that they were collecting, that is manna, and brought it forward into the culture of their day. So really, is this about works, food, following the law, or obedience to God? So now we see there is some confusion about what constitutes work. So the peeps at that time and the times afterward defined by interpretation, not revelation, what it is to work. So as many do today, missing the whole point of the Sabbath, which we will get into in a minute, they prepare their Sabbath meal a day early so that they do no work on the Sabbath. Now, in my personal experience and observation, you should not eat some meats as it takes quite a bit of work to gnaw it down to swallowable pieces. Nor should you give your dog a Kong filled with peanut butter, because surely that is a Sabbath breaker, given the effort the dog will have to make to extract all of the peanut butter. Well, that's it for today. Eventually, we will get the two ends to me. You know what? I know Jesus laughed at that. I do, I do. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from it. Together we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, still, and destroy the works of the enemy and create space for the light of light to shine through into people's lives. Let us eat and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in deep water.